Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us on this TDX session on admin's guide to Salesforce Data Cloud. Uh, my name is William Ye. I'm a director of product management on the Salesforce Data Cloud product. Uh, within Data Cloud, I lead the kind of platform accessibility as well as the admin and provisioning aspect of the product. And joining me today is uh, Kunal. Kunal, would you like to do an introduction of yourself? Yes, thank you, Will. Hi, everyone. I'm Kunal. I'm senior product manager on the Data Cloud product team. I am. Uh, I currently own a Data Cloud setup as well as provisioning and licensing for Data Cloud. Back to you, Will. Thanks. And with that, let's get started. So uh, before we begin, obviously, I need to quickly show you the reminder of a forward-looking statement. This is just to remind you that Salesforce is a publicly traded company, and customers should base their purchasing decisions on products and services that are currently available. <clears throat> and with that, uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us in this session today. Uh, and uh, whether you're joining this uh, in person or virtually, uh, we appreciate you kind of spending the time with us and hopefully you'll find this session uh, useful for you, whether you're already familiar with Data Cloud in some capacity or would you like to learn more. And uh, with that, let's get into our agenda today. So let's get into our today's agenda. So we'll first start with a data cloud overview, just kind of giving everyone a take of what, what is data cloud in case you're new to the product, as well as a refresher of our you know, mission and what we like to solve. Next, we'll get into the user personas, the different types of users that can work with data cloud, what comes out of the box and how admins can adjust to it. We'll also briefly walk you through the setup flow to get your data cloud started from uh, zero to having data cloud available. And after that, we'll get into flow, which is something that you know a lot of Salesforce admins love. And we want to show you what you can do with flow within data cloud in, in the core admin platform. And lastly, we also have some uh, interesting things to show you with regards to using data cloud and in your uh, Lightning record page, or you know how you can access data cloud using SQL. So with that, let's get started. So first of all, there's a data explosion. Uh, businesses are all in on uh, digital transformation. There's a need to understand customer intent and their behavior to engage with them in the meaningful ways. But at the same time, they're dealing with challenges. You know, the cookie-less future, the silo, and fragmented data. Like, how do you understand cohesively the customer journey? Uh, and on top of that, all the data privacy and uh, additional information around this space. On average, you know, out of the 976 apps in a typical enterprise uh, customer, only a third of them are connected. And it takes roughly 35 systems on average for a custom experience to be complete. And not to mention, you know, 89% of technology leaders express today that they struggle with all these data silos. And like I said, you know, with this, uh, uh, with, with this uh, major business transformation, Using data to drive business is the mission critical step. Right? For customers, they expect real-time experience. They expect you to understand them more than just a case number, but really provide a personalized experience. And for employees, they need the data to make better business decisions. Right? Obviously, there's a lot of uh, industry knowledge and intuition, but at the same time, they want to have data to back into it or help them forecast looking to the future. And of course, for all other, other stakeholders, they need data-driven view across the business. And this is where Data Cloud comes in. So with Data Cloud, you can connect and unify all your customer data at scale from any source with API or with our out-of-box connectors. For many of our customers with multiple orgs today, this will also help you unify your data across different CRM systems or CRM orgs to better use AI and automation and BI. And with Data Cloud, you can harmonize the data in a single sort of truth model that makes downstream systems easier to work with. And you can also act on the data to create actions to automate the process or to provide your uh, next best actions. Some of you may think, you know, this sounds similar to our CEP product for marketing. And this is because data cloud is what powers our CEP product. Just like the early days of Salesforce where we started with the, uh, the sales app and then we built out the platform that we all know and love today, we found that the same when we were building this uh, B2C's hyperscale data lake, when we were building CDP. Think about you know, having all the data pipeline available, the big data processing capability. We know all these uh, things 
that we, we build can offer data cloud to be used across different clouds, not just marketing, but thinking into sales, service, or other use cases of your own to run your business. And the Salesforce CDP is still here, you know, now as data cloud for marketing. And you can do all the marketing focused, you know, business functions like creating a segment of audiences or, you know, acti activating them to marketing channels, all the things you expect to do with CDP. But there's also all the new features and improvements that we're bringing or we're innovating alongside with data cloud, like real time insights, like uh, building uh, intelligent audiences or acting on real time data or working with extended ecosystem. All these data cloud platform enhancements will be available. And of course, on top of that, you have the, the marketing focused capabilities that you still uh, know and love or would like to use. And so this is kind of like a, a view of what data cloud looks like alongside with the Salesforce platform. I don't want to put too much time on this slide, but really the focus is to show you that alongside with the traditional you know, transactional database of Salesforce uh, or the core uh, Lightning platform, we bring in these real-time capabilities with our hyperscale data platform with Data Cloud. And so it's built on Hyperforce. We're able to process much larger data volume than you know, a typical trans transactional database can do. You can manage all these events and you can still plug them into you know, flow automation, plug them into Einstein AI, work with sales service and other, other clouds within the Salesforce uh, product portfolio. And so this is how data cloud works, how, how all the magic happens, if you will. Um, first, we start with con connecting. So this is about bringing in data from various different sources using our built-in connectors, whether it's you know, S3, GCP, Azure, or bringing data uh, into our system you know, using really any approach you like, whether it's bulk or, or, or streaming, uh, whether it's your mobile or web applications, or even just directly through API. Once you get the data into our system, that's where we can you know, harmonize it. So this is about kind of preparing the data, putting them into a standardizing model so it's easy for you to work with it. Because when you bring these data from all these disparate systems, you know, it's hard to see whether account one is really equivalent to account two uh, in terms of a data modeling perspective. So having that canonical model of reference allows you to you know, put all these data into the system, having a single unified view to work with it. And with match and reconciliation, uh, we can create a unified profile based on the rules, you know, for example, the email, name, phone, or other uh, information. Uh, you can even you know, set how, how strict you want these rules to be to help you create a unified profile. So you can have you know, all these five different records of contacts into a single unified individual. That way you know you're working with the same person, uh, whether it's data coming from a you know, case system or from a sales record and so on. Once you have that data, next you can you know, uh, work on it. So how do you um, analyze or, or predict using the data we have available? With uh, Data Cloud, you can create calculated insights where you can create you know, multi-dimensional views on customer behavior and you know, what they represent, you know, how much they buy, how recent did they buy, uh, what product category or you know, are they on your VIP level, you know, whether it's you know, certain mileage club or if it's you know, uh, how many hotel stays that they have, to reach a certain category. And then of course you can personalize the data. So you can uh, then reach out to them using you know, uh, the, the data that you have set together to, to act on it. So you can look at a uh, certain demographic that you want to reach out to, uh, pushing those data through to the activation, whether this is using you know, your own marketing channels through Salesforce Marketing Cloud or passing them through flows even, and then passing from flows to your uh, downstream systems to reach out to the customer. And as you get all these, all these data, right? You know, when the customer is browsing onto the website, the event is coming in. That's when the whole cycle comes together, where we can, you know, react based on the customer's input and engage with them. And did I mention, you know, flows and journey? Like this, these are really already platform capabilities available today. And what Data Cloud can do is plug into these uh, builder system, allowing you to customize the rules that you want to engage with your users. Data Cloud is open and accessible. We built that as a key DNA when we were building the, the Data Cloud as part of Salesforce platform. So Data Cloud itself is accessible uh, in terms of data. It has you know, all these kind of first party advertising partners, 
You can even bring your own AI. And more importantly, it works with you know, App Exchange, where partners can build their solutions on top of it. We have APIs available for you to bring data in, to access data. We also have JDBC connectors for you to build those uh, BI tools integrations. And we want to make sure this aligns with the Salesforce ecosystem in terms of being able to work with our metadata, package the metadata, and deploy your solutions on top of the uh, Salesforce ecosystem stack. And with that, I will pass it over to Kunal to kind of talk you through getting started with Data Cloud. Thank you, Will, for an amazing overview of Data Cloud. Uh, now let's get started. Uh, before you actually go provision Data Cloud, we would want you to bring up certain things, things like what editions currently we support. We currently support four editions, Enterprise, Unlimited, Performance, and Developer Editions for Data Cloud. For all of these editions, you currently get six out-of-the-box permission sets that we create for you with the two versions of Data Cloud that currently exist. All of these six permission sets are standard permission sets, which can now be cloned, and you can always create custom permission sets out of it as per your business needs. For the six that we provide, uh, we currently have Data Cloud Admin and Data Cloud User. Admins over here are something that we imagine who will have everything all all access to Data Cloud. And these users, when they are system admin users as well, they will have access to Data Cloud setup, who will be able to go set up the different data sources for your Data Cloud instance. At the same time, you get four different uh, permission sets with the Data Cloud for marketing uh, version of it, which includes Data Cloud Admin, same as Data Cloud for marketing admin as well as Data Cloud for Marketing Data Aware Specialist, Marketing Manager, and Marketing Specialist. Marketing Manager and Marketing Specialist are very focused on the customer data platform use case of Data Cloud, where these are the users who can manage your segmentation and activations across the board. Diving deeper into these permission sets, we have this view for you where you can see what all accesses do you get with all of these six different permission sets. As you can see on the right side, the four are highlighted, which are only available with Data Cloud for marketing, whereas Data Cloud Admin and Data Cloud User are available with both the versions of Data Cloud, where Data Cloud Admin has access to everything, but not access to segmentation activation since it's not available without the Data Cloud for marketing version. Data Cloud user is a view only user who has access to all the aspects of Data Cloud, but can only view what is available to them uh, for other purposes, for their business purposes. Similarly, Data Cloud for marketing admin has all access and data where specialist is somebody who is basically a data modeler or your data architect in an organization who knows how to model your data as well as define your identity resolution rule sets and can define calculated insights for your organization as well as per your business needs. Your marketers are where who will be assigned marketing manager and marketing specialist uh, personas who will have view only access to majority of the things that are set by dataware specialists, but have access to segmentation activation to create new segments and activate upon them as well. So let's get you started with the steps that you require once you have bought your license to what you need to do in order to set up your data cloud instance. It consists of five different steps. First is how your data cloud admin permission set needs to be assigned to one of your system admin users. The same user now can go enable the setup of the data cloud instance. Once you have done that, the data cloud admins are also responsible for creating external connections to all your data sources so that data can be brought in. Once you have assigned the permission sets to your users, you can now go access the Data Cloud application uh, whenever your users need it. Diving deeper into all of these steps, first step is assigning of Data Cloud admission, uh, admin permission set. You can simply do that by going into your permission sets and accessing Data Cloud permission set and then assigning it to a selected user. Note that this user needs to be a system administrator for them to be able to access your data cloud setup. Once the user has access to data cloud setup, you can go to data cloud setup and click get started 
what this does for you is it creates the data cloud instance in the background for you and it might take a while but you can always monitor the progress on the same page as data cloud setup once this provisioning is complete you are all set to use your data cloud application once you have set up your data cloud setup you should go and connect your data sources to data cloud as well this you can do via the same data cloud setup in which there are multiple out of the box connectors that salesforce provides to you as well as you can always use mulesoft and ingestion apis and s3 connector to bring other data sources into your data cloud next step would be is for you to assign data cloud different permission sets or clone these permission sets as you see fit to assign to your different business users once this step is done you can now access your customer data cloud application via the app launcher once you click on it you come into the setup uh, you come into the application for data cloud and you can now access different tabs over here including data streams data models data explorer etc now we have completed the first aspect first part of your journey where you are now set up to use data cloud application assuming you as users have completed this setup as well as done the data modeling you have gone and created your calculated insights your identity resolution rule sets you have gone through the journey of your data cloud implementation we want to step into our next part of this presentation where we would want to talk about how data cloud configurations data cloud objects that are created by this setup can be now leveraged with different platform functionalities such as flow such as apex classes such as sql so moving on to that i would want to start with something new that we recently launched is called flow orchestration as salesforce users must you must be already aware about salesforce flow what we did recently with spring 23 release was we integrated flows with data cloud objects now going forward you can use salesforce flow builder to chain together different data cloud workflows such as see uh, calculated insights identity resolution segments activations in our current workflow we always had all of these calculated insights identity resolution schedules uh, running at a different time interval going forward you can automate them as you see fit based on different uh, business needs for example if you want to engage with a customer whenever certain object is updated you can now trigger a particular segment when a particular segment got up, when a particular calculated insight record got updated similarly these flows which are now data cloud flows can now be launched with apex classes with different set schedules when a particular record changes or with different platform events as of now we currently support five invocable actions for data cloud data cloud uh, data cloud ingestion for crm data streams for s3 data streams as well as for calculated insights identity resolution and publishing new segments all of these were currently running uh, with different schedules as of now but now going forward you can trigger them via flows but there are limits associated to them as well for example you can only publish calculated insights thrice in 24 hours via flows or with the schedule that is currently running on all of these things are currently already available to you and you can start integrating with flows and data uh, you can start integrating data cloud flows with your data with your data cloud of the objects with this i want i want to jump into a quick demo about for flows on how data cloud objects can be integrated with different platform capabilities as well as flows currently we are in the data cloud application where you can see all the data cloud functionalities as tabs above you can also access data cloud setup which we talked about earlier from through this button for the sake of this demo i'm going to go into setup and access flows via the quick find you can create multiple different auto launch flows through this for this particular uh, demo we are going to go into a 
workflow, which is a pretty in-depth workflow, but you can always create simpler ones as well. What we are trying to do over here at a high level is, first of all, refresh a data stream whenever this flow is triggered. This flow can be triggered by Apex classes or by different platform events, as you know. What, we, what the, uh, this does is it triggers a refresh for a particular CRM data stream when and waits for it to get completed. Once this data stream gets uh, refresh gets completed, it sends a platform event for which this particular flow is waiting for. Once that is done, it triggers a calculated insight refresh. Once that refresh is completed, it publishes a segment automatically. So let's drill deeper into one of these actions. Let's drill deeper into one of these data stream actions where you can see that it put uh, over here, we have an input where we can provide via the order launch flow. Whenever uh, we trigger this flow, we will be providing this data stream ID and that data stream refresh will automatically start. After the refresh has started, we are waiting for a particular event, platform event to resume this particular uh, flow over here. And these platform events can simply be uh, created via platform events. Over here, we have created two different custom events. One is data stream completion event and calculated inside completion event. These Both these events currently take a parameter for a data stream ID or a calculated insight ID. Whenever that is completed, it will this event will be triggered along with that ID over here. So overall, in a nutshell, this flow does is it refreshes, it's able to refresh a data stream. It's able to trigger a calculated insight once the data stream has been refreshed and as well as create a segment publish, which can now be used for activation everywhere. Back to you, Will. Thanks for the great demo, Kunal. And so to wrap up the session, uh, I'll be talking about how you can extend Data Cloud with the Lightning experience, as well as working with it using Sockle. So Data Cloud actually has a few out-of-the-box Lightning components that can be used. If you've seen our demos before, the unified individual record itself is just a Lightning record page. And within that page, there's various different components that build that page, whether it's the record detail or the related list components or the calculated insights components. And so we recognize that you might want to service this information even with your contact records in your uh, sales and service usage. And so we made these uh, standard components available so you can drop it into the page. The three components we have today are the profile related components, where it shows you the list view of objects linked to the unified individual. So these are the unified contact points, uh, unified party identifier. And uh, once you drop that component into the page, it will show you these uh, sections of different related objects and their information. We have the profile engagement, which is kind of like the timeline view, uh, showing you the engagement data related to that unified individual and what type of activity that has been done over the past 90 days. And lastly, we have the profile insights component, which is our calculated insights component that you can use to show the you know, uh, uh, summary view or you know, uh, different dimensions of the data relating to that record that you have pre-calculated. As we're querying the data cloud data with SQL, so Salesforce Object Query Language or SQL is a similar language to uh, SQL. Essentially, it's a select statement that you can use to query Salesforce data. And this enables you to access data across Apex, you know, custom UIs or Lightning components, or even in Flow. And so with SQL and Data Cloud, you can query our Data Lake object, which is the kind of source data that you brought into Data Lake, as well as our Data Model object, which is the, you know, the, the harmonized view, where you bring all the different sources of data into a single data model, let's say account or contact, where you can then access some information. And it's really easy to access these data. You can simply um, create a select statement, choose the fields you want and from which object you want to pull from, and the data will be available for you to access. And with that, I will do a quick demo showing you a bit of uh, both of these that I just mentioned above. OK, so here's a quick demo. So we're back into our Data Cloud org. Again, this is just the standard Lightning experience you've uh, known and loved with Salesforce over the time. And let's start with the Lightning components. So I already opened up a contact record. This is the one that I've been using for a lot of the demos called Edward Samos. But as you can see on the right-hand side, we have a few components available. 
the very top one is actually a custom component. So this is a custom component that we created to showcase, you know, the different uh, data cloud presented data available that you can pull from. And so using SQL and Lightning Web Components, you can easily create your own components to show the different information that you care about the records. And then if you go further down, you'll see, you know, the calculated insights component that I mentioned earlier, as well as the activity component, and even the uh, <clears throat> uh, the individual, uh, sorry, the related list component that we talked about relating to the unified individual. And these are all simply you can drag and drop. So let's go into edit page and quickly show you how you can do that. So within the Lightning App Builder, you'll notice on the left-hand side, there's the data cloud profile engagement, the data cloud profile insights, and related records. And all you need to do is to just drag and drop in into the page, and they're readily available for you to use. Uh, you will just need to go in and you know, fill in a few things like which data space you want to pull data from and other filtering criteria. But once you save the page, the uh, Lightning component will uh, you know, be aware of your context of which record you're viewing within the contact and pull in the relevant data from Data Cloud. So this is a, uh, a very simple way for you to integrate or bring the Data Cloud data available directly to your user within the Lightning experience. But I also mentioned that you can access these data really easily. Right? So within Data Cloud, there's a Data Explorer tab today where you can go in and look at the different objects available. So as I mentioned, the data model object is where you bring the various different sources into the kind of harmonized view for you to then work with it. So you know, if you have five different sources of accounts, they can be named differently. But once you map into the data model and data is ingested, they will all be available under the account object. And this page itself is actually built using SQL. So we actually have a button here for you to inspect to look at the SQL statement that we uh, constructed in order to provide you this view in the UI. And what you can actually do with this is you can copy this SQL statement and go into that console or use this SQL statement in Apex. And if you just copy and paste it and execute, you will get the same result. So essentially, we'll be pulling the data directly from Data Cloud within the Salesforce Core platform. And as I mentioned, right, this is you know very similar to to SQL. If you're not familiar with SQL, please go check our developer uh, documentation. But it's very easy for you to work with. So, for example, we can easily uh, add a condition here where we want to narrow down the results. So I have a word clause here, and I'm just going to call up an account I know. So one of the mock accounts I have is Google LLC. So simply typing in the word clause with the field name. I can filter out the query, and it should return me with only the account rows with the account name Google LLC. And so as you can imagine, using the SQL query, you can then create custom UI. You can create your uh, custom Apex classes. You can you know, further customize it on top of the platform, working with the uh, data cloud uh, data in the data lake directly. And that's it for the demo. And that's it for our session. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching. We would love to get your opinion on this content, so please leave us some feedback on the comment section below. If you did like this content, give that like button a tap. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the Salesforce Admins YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about being a Salesforce admin in general, head on over to admin.salesforce.com. Thanks again.